So before starting integrating MongoDB in our application, I just want to show you that what is authentication is in loopback, how loopback makes us able to authenticate user when uh, someone is trying to update, delete or create new items. So uh, the command that is used to edit the authentication is LBACL and I'll press enter and it will ask me few configurations for a particular authentication that what we want to uh, set permission for. So wait for it. So the first question is select the model to apply the ACL entry to. So I will select the item and select the ACL scope use arrow keys. So I'll select all methods and properties because we ha just have the one name property in our item. So I'll go with the all and what kind of permission I want to give it to whether it's a read, write or execute. If we want to just uh, assign the read permission, we can select the read. Uh, and if we want to just assign a write permission, we can select the write. But I'll go with the all and now I'll select uh, whether I want to apply permissions to authenticated users, unauthenticated users, all users, or user owning the object. So I'll click on the unauthenticated user. Now I will set the permission for unauthenticated users. Uh, so I will click on the explicitly deny access to those users which are unauthenticated and which are not logged in uh, those users won't be able to do any kinds of thing they won't be able to get any kind of data because i have set all types and all properties uh, and so i'll click on the explicit deny access so it has created the first authentication if i want to edit it manually or uh, uh, i don't want to use this command i can go to the common model and item.json if i go down you can see that within the acl property uh, the array it has created a new object the type the principal type and the principal id which is unauthenticated and the permission is deny so let's test it out i will run node space dot so let's reload it now if i go to the item and click on the item and try it out it has given me an error with the message that you are unauthorized authorization required okay because i haven't logged in i have set the authentication that's why it is giving me this error i can't even post it i can't even delete it uh, so let's go to our users and create a new user okay so for creating a new user, I need to write email. So you can write any email. So, and I need to add a password. One, two, three, four, five, and, and the object. So I have given it email and a password. So let's copy this out and try it out so it has created a new user with an email umair at gmail.com okay so with the uh, response code 200 which is a success now let's try if it has created so try it out authorization required okay because i can't get the user now i need to log in so for logging in, this is the API that Loopback provide us. So go to the login and the credentials. And actually that has to be within the object. So email and the password. So try it out. So now we are logged in, but it has given me a token, access token. Okay. And this ID is the access token. 
we can't do anything until we set the token uh, right here so copy this token we are going to set it in the current session so I'll paste it right here and click on set access token now it has shown me that token has been set okay so now let's go to the item because the item is the model on which we applied the permissions we set the authentications now get and try it out you can see that there is no authentication required now because we are logged in uh, because uh, there wasn't any item inside it uh, uh, that's why it has written empty array but it is not showing any error so let's create a new one so mouse so try it out so it has created now go to get and click on try it out it has given us the name uh, mouse and it has an ID so we have got the permissions we can uh, change the permissions uh, from all to a specific one like right uh, we can run the command LBACL as many times if we want to assign permissions to various models or we can assign different permissions to a same model as well. So that was a pretty basic introduction of the authentication in the loop back. So now uh, that was it. Uh, now let's get started and uh, work with the MongoDB and add a connector with our application. So uh, loopback has a built-in model uh, if we want to search let's search on loopback connector mongodb so this one so this is the module that we can use for our uh, connection to our mongodb so let's copy this and paste it right here. I need to use hyphen hyphen save because I want to add it in our package.json. So let's save it. So I'll press enter. It's going to install this module within our node modules folder right here. Okay, so it let it install all those dependencies. So you can see it has installed this loopback connector MongoDB. Okay, so before moving further, uh, I just want to run my MongoDB server. So if you haven't installed MongoDB in your system, make sure to download and install the latest version R of MongoDB. And uh, you need to create a data folder within your C directory and within the data folder you need to create DB folder because by default if we run the MongoDB uh, server it uh, it needs to have these two folders uh, created within the C directory okay but uh, I won't be using this DB folder so I will create a new DB2 folder okay and I will open up my CMD let's go back to CD and right here if I run MongoDB it's gonna start the server on the directory DB data and the DB but I want to use another directory that is DB2 I don't need to run the MongoD just instead I need to add a DB path after that and DB path is copy this and paste it and I need to add a port and the MongoDB port by default is 27017 okay so I'll press enter and it's going to start the server but it is waiting for the connections okay so for running a connection I just need to run a mongo command in my CMD so if I go to my program files and I need to go to MongoDB server bin directory right here this is the Mongo I need to navigate to this directory within my CMD and run the Mongo command it will 
uh, add a connection to this MongoDB server. But uh, this is not uh, a good way. Uh, I need to have a user interface, a proper UI that shows me uh, if a data has been entered to specific model or to specific uh, document. <clears throat> so for that, I use a RoboMongo. RoboMongo provide me a basic a user interface. So it's going to ask me that add a connection. So I'll click on the connect and it's going to create the connection. So you can see that it has shown me connection accepted from this uh, host. Okay. So <clears throat> now we have running MongoDB and we have created the connection for the MongoDB. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go and run our application <clears throat> so if i reload it <clears throat> if i want to get the items <clears throat> authorization required because um, i'm not logged in it has been uh, logged out because the session has been expired but uh, before testing that out, we are not done with the MongoDB connection yet. Uh, we need to create a connector within the data source. So if I go to my server and if I go to data source, right now it is set to the connector simple memory. Uh, we are not setting out the MongoDB right here. We need to add a DB connector with the host and the port, username, password and all this. So rather than adding it we have a simple command so within the terminal in the directory so i will run lb data source mongo ds hyphen hyphen connector mongo db so i'll press enter and it will ask me few questions enter the data source name so I will write Mongo D. So I will go with the Mongo DS. Uh, it has just shown me within the bracket, so I'll just press enter. Now let's see, it is showing me what kind of uh, DB I want to use with. I have the Mongo DB supported by strong loops. So I'll press it and connection string URL. So I'll go with the same connection string. I'll press enter. Host is the local host. And the port is 27017 and the user I don't need it password I don't need it and the database the name of database that I want to create uh, right here within the MongoDB so uh, let's add the items that is the database name so you can see above that it has created all these things okay so but uh, I need to replace this more DS to DB and I need to remove the above object okay so we have created a connection with our Mongo DB that is already running right here okay so but i want to remove this object i don't i just wanted to show you how to add the authentications uh, i don't want to log in to my account each time and set the access token so let's remove that uh, permissions okay so remove it and save this file and data source so let's run it node dot right now if i go so this and refresh it we can't see anything because uh, we haven't created any item within our model so this is the item so let's post a new item so let's add the first one and try it out so we have created our first item okay now if I go to this and refresh it we can see that we have an item if i go to collection and we have 
a view document so this is the item that we have just created so our connection has been done and we have the mongodb running and our data is being stored in the mongodb rather than in our local memory okay so um, let's click on it so we have the first so if i click on the second add and if i add the third add and if I go to RoboMongo and add a refresh it and go to the items and item we have this document and view documents and we, I have just created three third one the second one and the first one okay all these things are being shown if I remove the second one and if I go an item uh, let's go to the item and the refresh and view document we can see that the second one was deleted and it is not being shown in the DB as well. So our application is running uh, with the loop back and we are using the Angular as a front end framework and we are using a MongoDB as our database. So all these three technologies have been combined together and we are running a proper application. I hope that you have liked it. It is not a big application, it was just to show you how to make the configuration among these technologies. Uh, I'll be coming with the big applications using these technologies and obviously uh, I have to use uh, uh, frameworks uh, that makes things easy like loopback uh, for authentications and for uh, registering new users. So make sure to subscribe my channel and stay tuned for coming videos and that is going to be uh, really uh, based on big projects. Thanks for watching.